Hey everybody, Cheryl here from Healthy Living Garden to Table. Happy Taco Tuesday. Today I'm starting my new segment on Tuesdays. Every Tuesday I will bring you a new taco to serve on your Taco Tuesdays. Today is gonna to be the original taco with beef and a corn tortilla. So I'm going to make um, the original taco with beef filling and a bunch of other really good fillings. I'm also gonna show you how I make my pico de gallo an amazing guacamole, and then a side with black beans. So let's get started. So I, I went and went to the market and got my ground round here. I'm gonna break this up a little bit. I like to use a cast iron pan when I brown um, meat for tacos. Just so it gives that caramelization that I really actually love. Okay, let's just let get that started. So the other thing that I love putting in my um, ground beef is um, onion because it just gives it um, an actual a better flavor um, and it makes it a when you're even when you're doing turkey um, meat for your tacos if you do that and you add an onion the moisture level is through the roof so um, I'm liking the red onions more than I am white onions because I'm really not an onion fan unless it's um, cooked then I'm then I don't mind it at all so um, love roasted red onion oh my gosh that is so yummy isn't it if you've ever had that I love roasted vegetables period took half of that one off okay you get part of this cut up for the beef and part of it is going to go into the rest of the recipes and get nice and brown with the rest of the beef. The one thing that I that I always make sure I do when I'm making ground beef tacos is I try not to move the meat a lot. So you just let that sit there and caramelize and brown up and stir later. So this way it's not, you know, have you ever had too much meat in a pan and it starts like boiling and it's like boiled meat? Nobody likes boiled meat. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the pico de gallo. I've got my tomatoes here. It's gonna be tomatoes, red onion again. I'm gonna do Sloranto. You're either team Sloranto or you're not. Some people like it, some people don't. If, you, if you're not team Sloranto, leave it out and that's fine. I happen to love it. So, I am going, actually I'm gonna do the tomatoes first. So with tomatoes and pico de gallo, I actually like to squeeze a little bit of the juice out just so it's not so watery in the um, in the bowl. Sometimes it just it just gets too juicy. I like a little juice in there, but I squeeze some of it out. I always like to make sure I also find um, a real firm tomato. You don't want anything that's too um, soft and mushy because it just, for one, it doesn't slice really well. For two, again, it's gonna, that juice factor is really kind of high. And um, so you don't want overripe. So you wanna make sure when you're, when you're picking out your tomatoes at the market, they're a little bit firm. Checking on my meat there. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, nice spice on that. Save those other couple tomatoes for the rest. Okay, looks like we can give it a quick turn here.
So as I'm building the layers on all, all whatever I'm making, um, they're going to kind of have the same type of hints of things in them as the other. So the um, salsa is going to, and the pico de gallo, and the black um, beans, and the ground beef are all going to have red onion in them. They're going to have, a couple of them are going to have tomatoes in them. They're all going to have some lime juice in them. So you're repeating those flavors. So actually, so that they really meld well together and they still take on a different taste. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. Okay. So let me, let me do the what, avocados really quick. So when you're cutting your avocados, you cut it down the middle, give it a quick turn. And then to get the seed out, you're going to take your knife and just quickly put it right down the middle and then give it a quick turn. And then the, the seed comes out. Should I do that on the other one? Okay. So give it a quick turn. Go into the middle of the, the seed. I didn't middle it. It wasn't aiming right. There we go. And give it a quick turn. There we go. Okay, and then you're just gonna you're gonna just give it a rough chop. I'm gonna score it. I might have turned that, I might have stirred that a little. See the bubbling in there? I really don't want that, so I'm going to let that cut, cook out before I move it around more. Give it a quick score. There we go. We were just in Florida visiting family, and we, were, we went to this restaurant, and they had this guacamole. Oh my gosh, it was amazing, and I really want to recreate that one time, and I'll give you the recipe when I do, because it was just, it was the best guacamole I've ever had. My husband doesn't even like guacamole, and he loved it. It was just so good. It had the fresh lime in it, and it had cilantro, and tomatoes, and onions, and it had corn in it. It was just so, I don't know what else they did to it, but boy, it was really, really good. I'm, I will find out the recipe and get that. I will. Okay, so we have our, to our, our tomatoes chopped, we have our, our, our avocado chopped. I'm gonna go ahead and chop the rest of this, these couple tomatoes and put it in my guacamole here. Okay. I'll do the rest of the onion. I'm gonna make sure I finely dice this because again I'm not a fan of raw onions but in this I really I love it and um, as long as I dice them really really fine you're not di you're not biting into that that raw onion where it can be sharp and that's another reason I like the red onion because some people say it's sweet I still think it's a little sharp because it's onion but boy it, it gives a better flavor and it is a milder flavor than um, the white onions are so actually cook more and more with red onions than I have before just because I, I started liking it last year when I started doing the roasted vegetables in the oven and I roast some of the, the onion as well. So I'm going to put a little in the pico, put a little in the guac, and a little in the black beans. Now let me talk to you about these beans real quick. So what I did is I take, I cook my beans myself. I don't buy canned because I'd rather know that there's not a bunch of sodium in them. And um, it's super easy actually to cook your own beans. A lot of people think, oh, it takes forever. Black beans, you don't need to soak. I throw them right in my rice cooker and I turn it on white rice and I, let, and I go. So in like, I don't know, I think it's 40 minutes or something like that. 
it's done. <laughs> and so um, that's cooking black beans. It's very super easy. So put some in there. I'm not gonna put. I'm not gonna use all this onion. I'm gonna put it off to the side and save it for a different recipe because again, I'm not one to love a lot of onions. But that's okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is this um, our garlic. So. This is a very large garlic. I'm gonna put it in a little garlic in the pico, a little bit in each of these dishes. So what I do is I use um, uh, the zester and it actually is amazing because you're not biting down into that garlic and it is it just actually really, um, it's easier and you're not chopping and your hands don't smell like garlic. That's it. You just tap it off and there's your garlic inside there. Super, super, super easy. I love using the zester. I, don't, I use it for all kinds of, just not even just um, zesting lemon or lime, but I also love it for my my nutmeg. So I use this quite a lot. And then even in um, your Parmesan cheese. So I use it a lot. That was a large... Like for it to last all these things, that's large. And since this is getting kept down, I had one a little stringler fall in there. It's okay. A little straggler. Okay, if you don't have that big of a piece of garlic like I did, two two garlics would be just fine for all of this. And then you just Run your finger, make sure you don't go the wrong way. Run your finger along. That's it. Good job. Okay, give this a quick stir here. It's looking really good. And that smells amazing. So that's pretty much brown and done. So now we're gonna continue building layers. So um, I have lime juice. It's about probably three tablespoons of lime juice. Was super surprised each lime gave me that much because it, lime, limes don't always give you that much and I, I don't microwave. So um, I'm gonna put in, I'm just gonna measure it just because I wanna make sure you know. It's about a table, two tablespoons for the um, pico. One tablespoon for the guacamole, and one, two, and then the rest of it. Two in the black beans. Okay, so all of them are starting to still come together. Now we have our heat. Okay, I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not one that really likes hot, hot. Um, I like a mild heat, but jalapenos can get really, really hot. So the heat is in the membrane here and the seeds. So that's something that you just want to get rid of if you don't want that hot, hot. Be careful. I usually wear gloves when I when I do this and today I'm just going to be real careful and not touch them and then wash my hands really good because you want to make sure you, you don't want to put that near your eyes because that'll be, that's trouble. So um, getting all that membrane and the seeds off of there. I might not even use both of these. So not a huge one. The other day I had one that was just huge and it lasted me forever. Okay, so when you're getting them, you're taking the membrane off, you just want to run your knife down here like that. And that'll get that membrane right off. And that's where your heat is. That one's this side too. I didn't get that one in well enough. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to give it a really, really, really fine dice so it's not too much just in case there's heat living in there. There's going to be some heat. It's just not going to be that overwhelming heat with like if the membrane and the seeds were in it. So I'm going to put a little bit in the pico, probably more in the pico than I am anything else. And then I'll just put a little bit in the guac and then probably a little bit in the beans. But not a whole lot, because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those beans. Okay, so we're building the flavors. Okay, 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, now normally I get um, I'm, I get a can of, t of diced tomatoes with the green chilies in it. Normally I like to get the ones with that are roasted tomatoes because it gives, again, it gives that a bigger depth of flavor. And they didn't have them, so I just got the regular ones with the chilies in it. And what I do with this is I add it to the ground beef. So just the water that's in there, you're adding a little flavor to the ground beef. And the rest of it, I'm adding to the, the beans. And actually, I'm going to scoop a little bit out. I want a little bit more of the beans. Okay. You can do regular tomatoes and chilies if you want. I just, I like the um, to add that into the beef, so I really just wanted to add some of it to the beans as well. Again, you're building all those layers of flavor so that they kind of are similar in, in flavor profile, but not exactly, obviously, the same because they have different ingredients. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I make my own taco seasoning, so I'm going to put the taco seasoning in there. I don't buy taco seasoning because I want to control the ingredients, and it's actually super simple. It's chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, and onion powder, and oregano, and salt. That's all, that's all it's in it. It's really super easy to make your own. You don't have to buy it. And then this way, um, you're controlling the ingredients. I'm going to put two tablespoons. And then I'm going to add a little bit of extra cumin in it, because I like a little extra sometimes. This batch was not bad. Okay, then I'm going to add some cumin to my um, guacamole, and I'm going to add cumin to my beans. Okay, and this is just a teaspoon, but I, it was a heaping teaspoon. So. Then I like to add, there's a, this, um, I get it from Trader Joe's, it's a chili lime seasoning blend, and it's almost like um, a cayenne-ish blend. And I'm going to add that to the meat and a little bit to the beans. A little bit of salt. Just about a little tea, over a teaspoon, half a teaspoon in that one, half a teaspoon in that one, a little bit. So just a little bit in each one. I'm not a heavy salt person, but I like to have some in each. Okay, now we're going to do the Sloranto. And I like to, let me just stir these real quick. I like to do the Sloranto last because I don't want, for one, it gets all of your hands and it's hard to chop everything else. And for two, I like to make sure that there's not too much um, Sloranto. Now when you're doing, I mean, you know what, let me back up. When you're doing this, the avocado, the guacamole, I like it chunky. So what you're going to do is you're just going to squish it just a little bit just so it's the chunks are still in there. You can even just leave it whole like this and have it like that, and it's just amazing. But I like it a little bit smushed, depending on how ripe your avocados are, is how much smushy you're going to get it in there. But this is, again, it's almost like a, it's um, it's not a pico de gallo, but it's a chunky, it's a chunky guacamole as opposed to the blended stuff. I like it this way, it just, it just tastes, to me, it tastes really, really, I can taste more of the avocado, I think is what I feel like I taste. in a couple of them and leave in a few of them whole. So you can see that. Just, it's probably easier with a fork than doing it with a spoon. Okay. You want it a little creamy. Some people add the add water to it. When you add those tomatoes, it just that's the water, so you don't need to add water to it. Okay, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to add Sorrento, and I'm going to add the Sorrento to um, the three here: the pico de gallo, the guacamole, and the beans. Again, if you're not team 
um, Sorrento, don't do it. If you are, go for it. I am. Okay, I probably won't use all this, but what I like to do is I like to put it in a real big bunch here and roll it like you would, um, like if you're rolling a cigar, not that I've ever rolled one, but if you've seen one, you have. So you roll it together like this, as tight as you possibly can, and it gives you a better dice. Because even though I love it, I don't want to have this big bite of it. Sticks to your fingers. It's okay. I love the smell. It's still on top. It smells amazing. It has a fresh smell. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit in our pico. A little bit in our guac and a little bit in our beans. They used it all. That's good. Okay, let's give this all a quick stir and then we'll put it together and taste. It smells amazing and it's dinner time. Okay, that looks good. Pico de Gallo. That looks amazing. We have our tomatoes in here, our onions, our cilantro, a little jalapeno, some garlic, because I love garlic and everything. That's great. And then we have our beans. We have that cumin in there. It's just going to give it a really nice smoky flavor. And it's going to tie it in as a... As a um, a little Mexican condiment. Now, a lot of times when you go to the restaurant, they'll offer you like refried beans or they'll offer you black beans. So um, you can definitely cook this if you want to, because I know that usually when they offer you like a refried bean or a black bean in the restaurant, it's um, it might be cooked on the side. I just, I like it just raw like this. It tastes really good. Okay, so let's build us a taco. Okay, let me see, let me get this out of the way. Okay, made a big mess. Okay, let's put a little bit of our taco meat in here. And then let's do our little bit of our pico de gallo. Oh, I'm gonna do, yeah, pico de gallo. And some of our guac. You could do lettuce on here. I don't have any room for lettuce, obviously. <laughs> so that's fine. A little bit of this on the side. I like lots of vegetables on my tacos. So this kind of fits the bill of a lots of vegetables. Let me take it right here. Mmm. 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 That's really good. If I do say so myself. Mm. Let me try this black beans here. Mm. Oh, that's, that's really good. Just amount, the right amount of heat and that smokiness from the cumin is makes it really, really good. Mm. So first Taco Tuesday in the books turned out amazing. Super happy about this. If you, <clears throat> if you like this content, do me a favor and subscribe and hit the like button and maybe leave a comment and we will do Taco Tuesday. Next week will be a different taco. Join us next time and I hope to see you again. Have a healthy day. Bye.